Hey, visionaries, you are now tuned in to the Starts With a Vision podcast, where everything you do in life starts with a vision. If your vision is clear or foggy, you are in the right place. It's time to go take what's yours, because there's a vision only you can see, and a dream only you can dream. And now, your host, Mr. Starts With a Vision. What up, what up, what up, guys? It is Mr. Starts With The Vision, and I am excited. I have a dope episode for you. I have um, a very interesting story for you um, on this on this podcast episode, and it's going to tie directly in to the betterment of yourself, right? But let me say thank you, man. Thank you so much for tuning into the podcast. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Thank you for bettering yourself because I know for a fact that you are becoming a better person by listening to this podcast every single Monday through Thursday or whenever you do listen to it. So I just had to express my gratitude because of that. And also I want to say if you uh, need a question or you want to hear something on the podcast, you want to hear my perspective, shoot me a text message at 678 is it 720-678-841-7928. I almost forgot my number, man. I got like four of them. But it's 678-841-7928, okay? Shoot me a text message. Let me know who you are, where you listening from. It is my number, and I do respond back. Seriously. So, that's what I wanted to say, but we're going to hop into the quote, and then we're going to get into the topic, and we're going to change lives today. We're going to set people free today, man. Seriously. So, the quote, it goes like this. Are you ready? That's not the quote, but I'm asking, are you ready? Because I'm about to bring some heat to you. So, check, check this out. Forgive yourself for not being at peace. Now, listen. The moment you completely accept your non-peace, your non-peace is transmuted into peace. Anything you accepted fully will get you there, will take you into peace, okay? This is the miracle of surrender. That's by Eckhart Tolle. I'm going to say this one more time. I'm going to break this down. Okay, so... Forgive yourself for not being at peace. How often do you beat yourself up? I do it all the time. Literally. I'm very hard on myself. I am a very, very, very tough, tough, tough critic. Very tough critic. So I want to ask you this. You have to forgive yourself for not being at peace. Now, you may have not been at peace for whatever reason, but you need to forgive yourself because of that. And then the moment that you completely accept your non-peace you, your non-peace becomes peace, okay? So I want to think about this. Let's, let's walk through this, okay? The second you say, I am at peace with not being at peace, right? Then you become at peace. I know it may sound confusing, but this is how it is. This is how it goes. Stop being so hard on yourself. Stop being so stressed out. Stop being so... Um, so, so worrisome. Okay. Just accept what's going on in your life. Good, bad, ugly, the turmoil, the storms. It don't matter. Right. You made a million dollars. Stop saying I shouldn't have this. Please. Okay. So accept the non-peace. The non-peace turns into peace. Okay. And then it says anything you accept fully will get you there. And it will take you into peace. So whatever you accept, not in a settling way, but whatever you accept and say, I'm perfectly fine with this. I'm content with this. It turns into peace. And that is the miracle of the surrender. Because when you surrender and from from trying to control everything and trying to control life and all that stuff, what then happens is what? What do you think happens after that? What happens is you are no longer stressed out. You are no longer Um, feeling like you're rushed, you are no longer living life like this, you're just at peace. And whatever happens, you're okay with that happening because you understand that you cannot control life. You can't control certain things. You can only control how you react to them. And that is all a mental game, right? So with that being said, 
everything you do in your life, yes, it does start with a vision because I know that's what you was thinking. But when you're living life, man, you just have to learn how to accept and surrender sometimes because that is the best way to deal with it, to cope with it and to let things come to you. That's how you allow things to come to you is when you is when you accept. Right. If something happens, you can't control it. You need to just accept that. You can't control it. You can't force things to happen. And when you force things to happen, it's usually the worst things ever. So please, please, please know and understand that you, there is power in surrendering and accepting. So that's the quote of the day, man. That's by Eckhart Tolle. He wrote a whole bunch of books, but um, The Power of Now is definitely a good one. So check him out. He is a great author. Now, this is what I want to do. This episode may be a little bit quick, but I want to talk about something that is very important, very important, and people may not talk about this. Well, they're pretty sure they don't. But, so I want to tell you about a story. So here's the story. Back in 2014, I want to say, 2014, just got into real estate. I'm a baby, right? I'm a baby in real estate. I'm a baby in business. I am just a complete baby, right? And when I say baby, I don't mean cry baby. What I really mean is I'm brand new to it, right? I'm a guppy. I'm, I'm, I'm new. I'm small, everything, right? I'm green and people could smell it. But I had this guy I met, and he was supposed to be like my mentor. And so, yes, he did scam me, but he still I still learned certain things from him. So I remember we're talking, right? We're talking, and he's like, you know what? He was like, when you close your first deal or you make your first check, he was like, I need you to go blow your money. And we was like, it was me and another uh, good friend of mine. And we was like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, you sound stupid. And he's like, hey, go blow your money. So he was like, let me explain. And this right here, I am not going to lie. It made so much sense. And it definitely, definitely um, resonated with me after it was explained. So he said, if you made $10,000, you need to go blow You know, a thousand of it. I mean, blow it. Do whatever the hell you want to do with it. If you are infatuated with anime, go buy a thousand dollars worth of, uh, you know, anime. Or, you know, if you love traveling, then go blow fifteen hundred on a vacation. And here's why. If you made ten thousand dollars. And you don't blow a portion of that small portion. What you're really telling the universe and God and the world is you are scared to make more money because your relationship with money is not good. That's what that means. If you are not okay with letting money go effortlessly, then you're not okay with making money and letting money come to you effortlessly. This is all about what your relationship with money is. So if you make $5,000, you should spend a little portion of that on something that is not related to business. It's not related to family. It's not related to progression. It's related to you having fun. It's related to you, you know, um, being happy. Because if you work so hard, if you work so hard and you made five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars and you don't spend any of that on something that you like, know, enjoy, then why in the world are you even doing it? You're going to feel like you're a slave. You're going to feel like you're working for nothing, like you're working for no reason. I want you to hear what I'm saying here. That's why it's so important to blow some kind of money. Go buy a pair of shoes and not feel guilty about it. And that's another thing. If you blow this money and you feel guilty about it, then you still have work to do with your relationship with money. 
I am not advocating or promoting you wasting money and being irresponsible with money. But if you just made five, ten thousand dollars, you can take a couple hundred dollars and go blow it. Go on the shopping spree. Go to Six Flags. Go do something that you just wanted. You have to do things for you at some point in time. At some point in time, you have to do things for you. And I know this factually. Factually. Because what's going to happen is if you get in the, if you get in the habit of not blowing money, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be making money, making money. You're going to be hoarding money. And money is not meant to be hoarded. It is meant to be circulated. And after this, what's going to happen is you are going to feel as though you're going to feel as though I'm making this money, but I'm not happy. I don't have what I want. And that's just it. I'm, I don't know what I'm working for. I'm working way too hard for nothing. Okay. But what if, let's just, what if, what if you said, you know what? I made money. I'm getting what I want. I'm having fun. I'm enjoying my life and I'm not stressed out. Stress comes from a lot of different things, but one way stress comes from is withholding or holding yourself back of something that you want and or desire. So if you want or desire something, then go get it. If you want that $200 pair of headphones, then go get that $200 pair of headphones. You deserve it. If you found a way to make five, ten thousand dollars $10,000, why aren't you able to go make or to go get that $200 pair of headphones and then make that $10,000 again? So this is all mental. This is just a mental game. That's it. And so when he told me this, I said, damn, I'm going to adopt this philosophy. And this philosophy is kind of how I live my life. So I don't blow money per se. And I, well, I'm not irresponsible with money, but you have to be able and willing to blow money on something that you just like and want, because that's going to help you psychologically make more money. Don't buy into the the, the idea of, um, you know, hey, I, I, I can't. I can't spend money on what I want. I just need to save for my whole life. And nah, there's no fulfillment in that. And then you're just pinching pennies your whole life. So what are you really working for? You need to know what you're working for. And blowing money, it reminds you what you're working for at certain points in time. So that's what I wanted to say, man. That's the story and that's the episode. That is very important. What's, what's your relationship with money? But you need to go blow money. Go blow some. And see how you feel. If you could, if you can't blow money without feeling guilty, then you need to work on your relationship with money because you think that it's never going to come again and you lost out on something. So that's what I got for you, man. Shoot me a text message at 678-841-7928 and go blow some money. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Starts With The Vision podcast. Come get your vision clear at www.startswiththevision.com. See you there.